Hi everybody and good luck if you've got your test coming up. Um, so as Jamie said, we're looking at the task two um, today for the writing. So both academic general training, pretty much the same thing. So it's, it's valid for both of you. Um, and we're going to be talking about families. So we're going to get some good vocabulary uh, related to uh, families, get some good phrases. And we're going to look at how to structure and how to organize this kind of essay. OK, um, so those are some of the things that we will be looking at as we go through today. OK, so uh, this is our example question that we're going to look at. Um, so just have a quick read of that question there. And you can see that there's two specific questions that you're being asked here. So this is what we call a direct question essay. Doesn't really fit with the other types of essays. You know, it's not the uh, problem solution or that kind of one. But we've got two very specific questions. This sometimes throws people, sometimes causes a few problems. Um, I see a lot of people who you know, don't answer both questions or they answer one, you know, just very briefly in the introduction or very briefly in the conclusion. Um, so it's, I think it's important to look at this uh, very, you know, specifically today. Okay. So basically, um, we are going to um, look at how to structure this kind of question. Okay. Um, I'm not sure about the audio. Is it, is it, does the audio sound okay to you, Jamie? There's a couple of people who are, yeah? Okay, good. Um, okay, so let's have a look. So first thing you need to do before you start writing, uh, read the question, decide what kind of question it is, because that's going to help you structure your answer. Um, and it's always a good idea to underline or circle the key words, because that helps you to really focus down on what you need to include in this essay. Again, another typical kind of problem candidates make is they write quite a generic essay rather than really, really answering the question that's been asked. So, you know, you do have to be very focused. Uh, so if we look at this question here, uh, what would you say are the key words in that question? What would you underline if, if you were doing this in the exam? Okay, very good. Family structure and changes, very, very important. And the roles is also very, very important. Anything else that you would? Okay, very good. Annika, yeah, also the, the positive and the negative. Okay. Um, so we're underlining the words which tell us what the topic is and we're also underlining the key words in each of those questions so the changes and then as uh, Anaki said the positive or negative aspects of that okay oh hi Nilofar um, so first thing you need to do is get those key words so that you know what you're doing okay next thing you need to do is to make a plan okay very very important i know you know the time is limited and, and it's a stress to get it all done in time but you really need to make a plan before you start if you do that you're going to stay focused um you're going to keep relevant um and you've already got your paragraph structure if you do that um, so then when you're writing, you focus on the vocabulary, you focus on the, um, on the grammar and those kind of words. Okay. Uh, so we've got two questions, two direct questions. So basically that's our two body paragraphs in the essay. So first body paragraph, answer the first question second body paragraph answer the second question okay keep them very distinct so first question the changes in the family structure and the family roles um so let's brainstorm a few ideas how do you think family structure and family roles have changed what kind of arguments would you put in 
Okay, multiple rows by the post, like square, very good. The nuclear, nuclear family structure, the breadwinner has changed quite a bit, yes. Okay, we've got a lot on the nuclear family. We've got quite a lot about payment. Very nice, elderly people don't stay with us anymore. That's very true. Maybe, yeah, having less parents. Okay, more working mothers. Okay, yeah, very good. Stay at home dad. That's very true as well. Okay, some very, very good ideas there. Um, parents are depressed. Yeah, I suppose so. There's a lot of pressures out there. Dual income. Very nice. Okay. Um, so what we went for, I think both of these were mentioned, is so grandparents no longer living with families, which, you know, was probably more common in the past. Um, and also now, again, the dual income we talked about, women probably earning as well as the man possibly you know having uh, more of a career than in the past okay um so those are two examples um again don't feel like you have to cover every single argument in both sections two arguments in each paragraph is a really good way of thinking about it so two ideas and supporting evidence for both those ideas okay uh, so then we move on to our second body paragraph. So we want to have balanced idea here is very good. So probably, you know, one positive maybe and one negative. So what do you think, uh, what's the positive impact of, of these changes? Or what have been some of the positive changes that have happened? Yeah, okay. Yeah, so both advantages and disadvantages. What would be the... Okay, more freedom, more income, more money. That's absolutely right. Okay, equality, flexibility, empowerment. Okay, some great words coming up here, guys. Uh, yeah, both parents are responsible. Okay, good. Again, more equality. Uh, less of a burden on the father. Very nice uh, words there, Ackman. Okay. Um, and what about some of what do you think might be negative about these changes? Okay, very good, Anikef. Yeah, Anikef's doing very well today. Grandparents being left alone. Uh, maybe the children might be a bit lonelier. Yeah, less time with the kids. Work-life balance. Very good, guys. Neglected kids. That's oh, it. It went. Sorry, but that was a good good point. Um, yeah, and maybe less time together. Um, so again, we've just chosen two. There are many many different arguments that you could have. Um, but you need to have, you know, put one positive, one negative. That's the best way of thinking about it. Um, so we've talked about the grandparents maybe being a bit more isolated. Uh, but on the other hand, positivity, freedom. A lot of people talked about freedom. Uh, oh, overprotective parents, Lisa. That's very nice. Um, and more opportunities for women. So, you know, the equality and the empowerment that a lot of you were talking about. Okay, so these are just examples. Obviously, you know, you're gonna have different arguments. Uh, so we've got our plan. So now we can start writing, but I really, really recommend that you make a plan before you start writing. It makes a massive difference, okay? So let's go through. So always the same structure for these essays, all of the different types of essays. So we start with the introduction. Uh, what are we going to do in the introduction? Okay, very good, Nilafar. This is of our old, old hand. Uh, we're gonna paraphrase the question, okay? And then what else can we do? Okay, very good, thesis statement. We've got uh, a few people coming out here or outline statement. So, you know, yeah, either of those, that would work. Okay, very good. Everybody's really on top of it today. Uh, then we have our two body paragraphs. Um, so what are we going to put in our first body paragraph? Okay, the, the thesis statement is when you say what you're going to do in the essay, but we're gonna look at it in a moment, okay? Uh, yes, yeah, so the first topic sentence, the first idea, exactly. So in the first paragraph, we answer the first question very specifically with our opinion. Okay, so this is one where you, you, know, you can put your 
opinion directly there. Uh, and then, very good, yes, Muscan, then we need our supporting evidence. So then we're going to, for example, we could give examples, Nilifa, that's very good. We can also give reasons, okay, um, explanations, all of those kinds of things, okay. So directly answer the question with your opinion and then back that opinion up with some supporting evidence, okay. Uh, yeah, explanation, Angela, that would be fine. You know, you have a choice here, but you do have to support your arguments. That's very, very important. Okay. Uh, then we move on to the second body paragraph. So in this case, we're going to do what? So we've directly answered the first question. Okay, perfect. Yeah, so now we're going to directly answer the second question. So this was the positives and negatives, remember. Okay, so you've got to keep these two things separate. First body paragraph is saying what the changes are. Second body paragraph is saying if they're positive or negative. Okay. Um, so yeah, we'll, and then we'll, again, we'll give supporting evidence. So you talk about perhaps the positive and then talk about the, the negative. It's usually better to be balanced and to have one idea on each side, okay? Uh, we're talking about family, changes to family structure, Natalia, okay? And if they're positive or negative. Um, you know, you could have two positives, you could have two negatives, uh, but to make sure your essay is complete, it's better to be you know balanced i think just it's it's always wiser or it's it's safer let's say um to always be balanced okay um and then we are going to finish with the conclusion okay uh so what are we going to put in the conclusion yeah okay so yeah we're going to sum up our opinions exactly okay very good yeah uh, so summarize, nice ideas, sometimes you give a recommendation or something like that, or even maybe a warning, okay? Um, so again, that kind of structure works for all of the different types of essays, okay? Introduction, two body paragraphs with two arguments in each body paragraph, and then your conclusion. Uh, yeah, you can put your opinion at the last line of the introduction, but just briefly, don't go into any detail, okay? So uh, we're gonna allow, go through each of those sections and we're gonna write them out in full. So we're looking at linking phrases, we're looking at vocabulary related to family uh, and how we're gonna structure those ideas, okay? So remember in the introduction, we're paraphrasing the question and then we are adding the thesis statement, okay? Um, so those of you who've been here before, I think know there are different ways to paraphrase. Um, it's not just synonyms. Synonyms is great, but also, you know, you can talk about, you can change the word order, you can change the, the grammatical structure uh, you know, we can change from active to passive or passive to active. So there's different ways. Yeah, gerunds, you know, lots of different ways that you can change the question. Don't, don't focus too much just on the synonyms because that sometimes makes it harder. Sometimes you just change the structure of the sentence and then that works really well as well. Okay. So let's go through this. Um, that's whether it's passive or active, okay? So you might say, um, now I'm gonna <laughs> find it hard to think of an example. Um, so you could say that, <laughs> that's terrible, isn't it? Okay, the general one, you know, the, the painting was done by Michelangelo, that's a passive, or Michelangelo did the painting, that's an active form. Okay, so there are two ways that you can do it. Um, so it's sometimes quite difficult to come up with, a, with a, an example. Um, okay, so let's look at these synonyms. Uh, so 
Uh, first one we're going to look at is in recent years. Okay. So what would be another way of saying that? Oh, very good. <laughs> Someone stole my car. My car was stolen. Okay. Over the last few, yeah, decades. Good. Remember, it needs to be um, plural. Okay. Good. So over the last few decades. So that's a direct synonym there, which is just word for word. Okay. Um, we can say family. What, what's a phrase we can use that means the same as family? You can say family or family. Any ideas? Uh, well, we got structured there. Um, we're not quite well, family. Yeah, members is slightly different. We're thinking of the one. It's just one. What is it? Oh, somebody had it there, nearly, nearly unit, not quite unity, but unit. So the traditional family unit. Okay. Okay. And then has experienced significant changes. Okay, good. Yeah. Uh, alterations is not quite right. Okay. Oh, like your exclamation marks, Mariam. That's good. Yes, changes. <laughs> Um, so we've changed it from a verb to a noun. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then again, we're going to change the word order. So both in terms of how it is. So we've got structure as a noun in the question. Okay. Very good, guys. Very good. Structured. Okay, or again, like sort of organized, something like that. But um, again, here we're not worried about the synonym, but we're thinking about the word formation. Um, so here we've got a passive voice there. Okay, uh, so that's what we mean by voice. Okay, um, and now we're going to change this one. So how could we change what word's missing there? Okay, very good, that pass, yeah, played. Okay, so we've got a nice collocation there. You play a role, okay? All right. So that's our paraphrase, okay? In different ways, we've paraphrased it. Now we're going to give our um, outline. We're going to talk about what we're going to do. So this essay will... What would be a good word to put in there? Okay, explore, Aniketh is very nice. Consider, okay, discuss. Those are all really nice ways of doing it. Examine would work as well, okay. Um, so we've gone for consider, okay. Um, and then after that, we're going to consider the nature of the changes and then we're going to, okay, good, analyze, discuss. Those are really nice ways, yeah. Um, this essay will deem, doesn't quite work, Ho. It's a really nice word, deem, but it's quite specific in its use and it doesn't quite work in this sense. Um, yeah, so we've gone for discuss. Uh, whether they are, okay, we've got positive or negative in the question, so we don't really want to use those again. Good or bad is a bit simplistic. We want to try and avoid those kinds of words. Um, yeah, we've got advantageous, beneficial. Uh, okay, yeah, we've got, um, we've got to use adjectives, harmful. Okay, that's very nice. So we've gone for beneficial or harmful. Okay, so very good. Oh, pernicious. Well, that's a nice piece of vocabulary there, Chitra. Very good. Okay. Um, you, you can, at the end of the introduction, you can give a, a point of view. To be honest, in, in this kind of essay, it's, it's probably less likely you would definitely, you know, you, or you, would, you could certainly do that with an opinion or a discussion essay. Okay. Um, yeah, so, yeah, a few decades, recent years, that's pretty much the same. Okay, good, Corinna, we could, you know, we could use nouns, so we could talk about the benefits and the downsides or the benefits and the drawbacks, the advantages and disadvantages. Okay. All right, very good, guys. Um, so let's have a look at a little bit of the language that we are looking at here. Um, 
so has experience that's always quite nice good one in terms of very useful academic phrase that you know you can use in pretty much all of your essays um, and then the introduction to the thesis statement this essay will consider okay so that's a really good way to do your thesis statement okay uh, consider discuss again analyze those kind of words that we were looking at okay um, but basically those are all very good phrases for the introduction um, again if you use a phrase like over the last few years recently in recent years you're going to be using the present perfect so has experienced significant changes okay all right uh, so that's the introduction so remember the first body paragraph answer the first question okay so we've got our ideas up there at the top just to remind you the two arguments that we're going to use just two examples two plus supporting evidence is always good yeah okay um so we're we're directly answering the question so we can use an opinion phrase okay because it, it's it's a direct question so nice expression would be from my um perspective um yeah you could say has been experiencing that would that would work uh-huh so uh there are two major what could we what word could we put there okay you could also say in my opinion of it okay differences yeah okay yeah so we've gone for differences just to make it not to use changes again because we want to make sure we're not using changes too much yeah or you could add a, a nice you like drastic ch changes gag and deep that's nice because that's a really good collocation okay um okay so how white might we begin the next sentence what would be a good linking phrase here okay good firstly yeah because you're gonna have two ones so we're talking about our first idea um we don't really want to use however because we're not contrasting with anything at the moment because this is our, our first idea okay so what could okay we've got significantly we've got dramatically drastically okay greatly very good we've gone for dramatically but those are all very very good yeah okay so to a great extent nilafar that's fine considerably those are all good tremendously yeah all really really good adverbs that you can use in that sense yeah okay okay um and then we have our supporting evidence okay um so again we're starting with a linking phrase always good to start with the linking phrase um you could use surprisingly if they, you were then about to say something surprising that that's quite a nice um linking phrase here so traditionally grandparents mm -hmm. anyone got Ooh, we haven't quite got oh very good anna keth was that anna keth with it? and eugene it's going by so quickly it's hard to see uh but yes so would because we're talking about something that was a regular thing we're not talking about an event we're talking about a, a situation a regular situation in the past so would is the best word to use for that yeah um would often live together okay uh with their children you couldn't use have because that doesn't go with live you would have to use a, a past participle okay manuela providing uh assisting would work um that's very good couldn't use giving because we wouldn't use with okay so but um providing them or assisting them uh would work very well okay uh notice the ing form there okay and then we give an example like childcare, babysitting that kind of thing okay um yeah okay so Tarek, when you use 
this ing form it's called a participle clause you want to add a comma just to break it up it makes it easier for the examiner and it makes it easier for anyone who's reading it to pause in the right place um yeah child mining works as well that's very good uh so now we're moving on to the next one so again we highlight the fact that we've now moved on to the second argument. So another major change is, okay, make it very, very clear that now you're moving on to the second one. Okay, so is the, what fits there? Mm -hmm. Okay, the, yeah, the role, very good. Most people got that, the role of the breadwinner. So now we've got a contrast. So in the past, okay, it would be the men who would be working, okay, while or whereas would work as well, or yeah, whilst, did I say? No, I don't think I saw So yeah, while the women stayed at home, past situation, and then we're going to contrast it. Okay, very good. So these days, however, Okay, women are much more likely to have the job. Okay, so we've got a nice contrast there between past and present. Uh, the breadwinner is the person who makes the money, the real money, the money that makes the family live. Okay, so oh, very nice, Julio, the provider. Thank you, that's a much better way of, of putting it. Yes, the, the provider for the family, the primary support for the family. Very good, guys. Okay, so you can see there with the linking phrases, we're going to look at the language now that, you know, we use a lot of linking phrases. You really need to use those to, uh, to highlight, to guide the examiner through your paragraph. Okay, so always think about what kind of linking phrase and a nice variety of linking phrases that you can use. Okay. Um, also the grammar, let's have a look at the grammar. Hi, Sarah. Okay, so as I was saying before, so any kind of change over time up until now, we're always going to be using the present perfect, okay? So it has changed dramatically, not the past simple, okay? Um, and again, with the word, so a regular situation, habitual action in the past, would is the best way to express that, okay? Adding extra information, great way to do that is ING, okay? Uh, particularly when you're giving the kind of the outcome, the result, you know, leading to, resulting in, creating, providing, making, those kinds of words. Uh, I'm not sure where you mean, Mohammed, but uh, you'd have to, Give me a bit more information, okay? Um, and then we've got the contrast between the past tense and then the present tense to talk about the two distinct uh, situations. Uh, we don't need, need to use a passive uh, because that's what has changed is the role of the family. So the subject is, is what's doing the verb, okay? And we've got some good vocabulary here. So extended family, childcare, Chitra mentioned child mining, which is very good as well. Okay, the breadwinner. Okay, yeah, nuclear family is a good word to use as well. Um, anybody have any other good vocabulary, good collocations you can think of related to family? Okay, step parents, yeah. Close knit, very good. That's a very nice expression to use. Okay, household unit, extended. Okay, oh, latchkey child, wow. That's very impressive. Okay, single parent family. Okay, guys, got some great vocabulary going on here, guys. Very good, okay. A stay at home mum, dear, also very good. Um, I'm not sure about that word, Emanuela. I think, does that a bit technical, Jamie? Monogonaic? <laughs> I 
that sounds a bit technical to me. I, I'd be, it's a bit risky. Yeah? Uh, we're not scientists, we're, we're linguists. Okay. Um, so let's move on to the second paragraph or somebody gets a dictionary. <laughs> uh, yeah, no idea. One something or other, I'm, I'm guessing, but that's just about as far as I can go. Um, okay, so uh, let's go to the second question. So this is the positive or negative. Very nice, Lisa. You've got some great vocabulary there. Okay, monogamous. <laughs> oh, yeah. Perhaps, could be. Okay, so again, it's a direct question, so a direct answer you can use in your, um, <laughs> you've opened a can of worms now, <laughs> Jamie. In my opinion, very good. In my view, that's fine as well, yeah. These changes, so what could we put in there? You could say from my point of view, Tarek, as well, that would be fine. Uh, Okay, impacts, effects. Okay, that's nice. Uh, science is okay. I think impacts um, or consequences is, is good. Yeah, okay. Then again, we've got to give a reason for that. We've got to give our supporting evidence. Don't just say an argument and then move on. Always support what you're saying. Okay, so what word do you think might fit in there? Okay, lack of support. Any ideas? What were we talking about? Okay, yeah, that's right. Moms get it. Yeah, babysitters. But yeah, childcare, something like that. That would work as well. Okay, uh, nannies. Nannies is a, is a neutral word, um, to be honest. Okay. Um, and then how are we going to link that to the next part? Okay, very good, which can be expensive. Okay, so we've got our cost issue here of not having the grandparents. Uh, and then we can add an, another argument on that. So older people may become, okay, a bird estranged. I'm sorry, I missed who wrote that, but that was a very, very good word. If you want to put it up again, Eugene, <laughs> was it you who put it the first time? That's a very good word, estranged. Um, that, that's really good, okay. Um, yeah, isolated works as well. I think isolated, estranged. Burden, I think that's a slightly different from, from what we're looking at, but it's, it's a good word, yeah. Okay, so um, isolated, we've gone for, but yeah, there's other variations. Okay, and then what could we put there? Okay, astray. Okay, we're, we're yeah, well, leading to, yeah, well, con contributing to, leading to work. Causing without the two would work fine, yeah, okay. So some good options there. Uh, just remember that after resulting, you need to say in, okay? Leading to, resulting in, okay? Um, okay, I'll, I'll explain that in a minute, Sipuni. I won't forget, okay? Uh, then we need to show that we are moving on to the positive, so a clear contrasting phrase. So, yeah, on the other hand, very good. Um, so, what could we put in here? It has... Okay, very good. So going back to what we said, it's resulted in greater freedom for women. Again, created would be fine, but then you wouldn't need the in. Yeah, so um, you know, think about your prepositions. Okay, so now we're adding some more information. Choose to, what could, okay, pursue, very nice. Okay, very good, guys. Really good collocation you got there. Okay which interests them and then how can we just add a little bit okay so we've got a while so we've got two things at the same time which interests them and we're getting more money from that okay um so again linking phrases linking phrases going um ooh, thus it doesn't quite work because the interest doesn't lead to the security. You see what I mean? The, thus is like therefore. 
um, so it's not really giving an outcome. Okay. Um, so let's have a look at the language. So again, we've got the linking phrases at the beginning of the sentence. Then we've got ways of joining the sentences together, which, who, while. So we've got conjunctions, we've got relative clauses, uh, lots of things like that. Okay. Um, don't always have to have an example, Sushan. You can have a reason, you can have a consequence, you can have an explanation. Those are all different things that you can do as part of your um, as part of your support and evidence. Okay. Yes, Mami, always at the beginning of the sentence, the linking word. At the beginning, comma, and then you carry on the sentence. Okay. So um, this is going back to what you were saying, Sapuni, before. You're talking about changes over time, so trends, patterns, that kind of thing. Then you need to use the present perfect. Okay, so have had positive and negative impacts. We're talking about the changes here. Okay, has resulted. Okay, so whenever you're talking about a trend or a change over time, make sure you use the present perfect. Okay, um, again, always good as well because you don't want to sound too absolute. These are our arguments after all, they're not facts. Um, so using the modal verbs works very well with that. So, it, you know, it might be, it could be, it can be. Those kind of things work really, really well. Okay. Um, and then we've also got the relative clauses with the which and the who. So it's very important to have complex sentences, but it's also very important to have a range of different sentence types. Okay. Remember the category the marking criteria is grammatical range and accuracy so range means that you need to try and vary your sentence structure as much as possible okay so um and then again we've got some good vocabulary here lack of support okay all of these ones that i'm highlighting here okay uh and collocation particularly all right. So then we move on to the conclusion. So as we said, we're bringing everything together. Okay. No new ideas in the conclusion. Really, really important. Don't start mentioning things you haven't meant, uh, you know, before. Okay. So how do we open our conclusion? Okay. Very good. In conclusion. In a nutshell is a really, really good expression, but it's not really formal enough for the essay. Yeah, um, it's more maybe, you know, when, if you were speaking, you could say it. Um, yeah, we can also say to conclude, to sum up, things like that, that works very, very well, okay? Uh, so again, like, yeah, we're giving our opinion, we're summing up our opinion. So I would, I would say, okay, I would, yeah. Also say argue. It's very nice. Yes, somebody had it there. <laughs> it's going so quickly. Yeah. Um, so we're going to say that we feel like it's generally positive. Okay. Why are we saying that? Uh huh. Okay. Very good. So as or because or since women now have greater opportunities. Okay. Uh, to join. To join what? What were we talking about? Think about your collocation. Okay, very good, Rishiketh, Asita, the workforce. Okay, Debbie, very good. All right. Um, and then we're going to give a little contrast because we're not 100% on one side. We've given a positive or negative statement. Okay, very good. So, however, you know, isolation is a problem for sure. Okay. Um, okay, which, how are we going to end that bit? Okay, well, all of those solve, resolve, those work nicely as well. Address works very well. Tackle also, Hanan, works very well. And Peggy, okay. Uh, okay, oops, sorry, I'm into that. So very succinct conclusion there. Um, where we're having, because we did a positive and a negative, 
we've got a conclusion that is kind of between the two okay um and that is the whole um essay there put the number of words so because everybody always asks how many words so it's down there at the bottom uh so you don't have to do that um so you can have a look at that structure while we go through the question and answer oh quarter two almost exactly okay i'll just put the exam tips up as well um Fantastic. Thank you very much, Emily, for that presentation. And thank you guys for uh, yeah, some of the great vocabulary and suggestions you had. So well done. Um, we have some time to discuss some of your questions now. There were a lot of them in the Q&A. If you do have some more, please feel free to add them to the Q&A. We'll do our best to discuss as many as we can in the time we have left. So I hope you found that presentation helpful. Um, thank you for the nice feedback, guys. That's, that's great to hear. I'm glad, glad you found that, that useful. Excellent. So um, before we go in to discuss your questions, I would just like to mention some of the premium services that we offer on our website, IELTSOnlineTest.com. Um, these are paid for uh, services. Uh, we offer these webinars for free. They enable us, uh, the, the premium services that we offer are, are like some extra support that you can have. Um, we offer a writing and a speaking evaluation service where you can book some time with an examiner. You can send in some writing uh, to which we can give you feedback on uh, your strengths and your weaknesses any errors that you make uh, commonly and that can help you to improve your band score. Um, we also, if you're interested in extra support with reading or listening, we have a series of video lessons now available on our website where uh, one of our tutors, uh, it's me at the moment, explains uh, how to uh, go through the reading and listening test the different strategies that you can use for different question types. So if you're confused about the how, how to approach the reading, how to approach the listening, uh, you can check out the video course on our website. Okay. Um, you'll also be able to watch uh, the recording for this webinar on our YouTube channel. So I'll put the link to that in the, the chat as well. Okay, can you guys hear me okay? Because my screen is uh, freezing a little bit. So is, is that okay, Annalie? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. good. I can, I can still hear you, but there might be some issues looking at the questions, but we'll, we'll do our best, okay? If I, uh, if I cut out at all, just <laughs> feel free to, to jump in. Okay, so um, a question from Duyen here. Duyen is asking, can we use the expression to name but a few instead of etc or etc mm -hmm. yeah to name but a few is a really good expression um etc is definitely something you should avoid okay it's not formal language don't put etc either as abbreviated or the full form either way it's not good uh, but to name but a few is a is a nice way of giving some examples and you always put it at the end of the sentence yeah absolutely yeah i would say etc etc it, it kind of sounds like you've run out of ideas or like you're not sure um but if you say to name but a few it's yeah sounds like you've you've thought of all of them and you're just <laughs> giving one or two examples so exactly. very nice expression yeah um let's see um natalia is asking is however a nice linking word isn't it too simple Hmm. Um, it, I mean, it, it works. I think that it, it, there are a variety of ones, like you can use nevertheless, nonetheless. Um, it, it's really good to have, you know, a range of linking phrases for all of the different ones uh, to use. Um, for some people, you know, the fact that you're using however would be a good thing because, you know, you're making it clear. If you're already, you know, like yourself, finding that quite simple, then you can move up to maybe a more complex linking phrase. Um, so remember, we're dealing with different levels here, so we need to make sure we're covering everybody's ability. 
Yeah. Definitely. I would add that if you're not sure, then I would stick to a, a more simple word like however, just because it's very clear and it will do the job with linking your ideas together. So um, if you're not sure about whether it's accurate or not, I would stick with being mm. accurate rather than complex. Okay, uh, let's see. We have quite, had quite a few questions, um, especially earlier on about, are we supposed to write about positive and negative aspects? And this is from Ishita, who's uh, saying, should we mention both positive and negative aspects or is it okay just to discuss one side and not the other side? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, you do have a choice um, because it doesn't say discuss both sides. Um, it, it's always good to have a balanced essay, I feel. You know, I think the examiner feels like you've looked at all aspects of this question, you know, or you've covered everything. Definitely a complete essay. Uh, you're not going to have any worries there. Um, but if you wanted to put two negatives or two positives, that would be fine. If you do that, then in your conclusion, you want to show that you've got a, a strong opinion. So your conclusion needs to follow on from what you've put in the body paragraph. Okay. Yeah. Um, so yeah, two positives would then be, I think this is a really good thing. Yeah. Um, so make sure that it, it, it matches. Definitely. Definitely. Um, so let's see, we have a couple of questions about conclusions here. Nithin is asking, can we give two conclusions at the end? And Rima is saying they are horrible at writing conclusions. So any advice there? I guess the first one, um, can we give two conclusions at the end of the essay? Uh, no, I don't think you want to do that. It's, it sounds confusing. Um, I don't know why you would want to have two conclusions. Just have one paragraph. Begin it with a clear phrase, like in conclusion. Um, and then, you know, just, just summarize, put together what you've talked about. Um, it's, it's kind of like it's a wrapping up. It's the overall consequence of everything that you've said. Um, so if you look at the end of this one, uh, we've got, um, you know, a problem which society should attempt to address. So we've got a recommendation there, how to deal with the negative side. So this is positive. This is negative. This is a way to deal with the negative. That's a really nice way of um, doing the, the conclusion because it means you're not repeat, just repeating what you've said, but you're not introducing a new idea either. Okay. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, we have a question here from uh, Karina, and I think a few people are a bit confused about using the linking expressions. So the question is about the use of a comma before while, and that's in the introduction. So it might be useful to, to oh, well, we can see it here, can't we, in, in the introduction. Uh, where, while? Body paragraph. Uh, uh, no, 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 no. Uh, let's see. Oh, yeah, no, wow. here. Men were typically expected to work while women stayed at home. Mm. Um, yeah, it's not necessary to put the comma there, um, actually, but commas always mean a pause that that's how you said that's what my mother taught me when i was young and i've always stuck with that if, if you would pause if you need to have a pause at any point you put a comma in um so it gives you a little bit you know men were typically expected to work while women stayed at home so you've got a, you have got a natural pause there so i think then it works to use a comma but it, it's not like a hundred percent necessary Okay. Yeah. you have a choice in that case yeah yeah ex exactly um a couple of questions uh one from galaxy and there was another one earlier how to overcome the time management problem so i saw a question uh they say they always spend 40 minutes uh writing their essay and then that doesn't leave any time to check mm. their writing at the end um any advice for how to write more quickly um, I think making the plan at the beginning is the best way to manage your time because you know exactly what you are going to 
um, to say then in the essay, you've got your content sorted first. Um, and then, you know, you can just, you can focus on the writing. I also think um, a lot of times, I think one of the mistakes that, candidate make, that candidates make is that they just write sort of stuff or information rather than having a focused argument. Um, so remember what we said, you, 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 your topic sentence, this is my argument, this is why I'm giving you this argument, okay? Next argument, this is why I'm giving you that argument. But don't go off like this, go forward, okay? And if you keep it that tight and that focused, it will, you know, it will be quicker to, to, I think, to do the paragraphs and to give your ideas clearly. So try and just stay very focused on that form of uh, argument and support and evidence. And don't just write stuff that's related to it, okay? Yeah, definitely. So maybe planning could help you there as well. If you, if you know what you're going to write before you start writing, uh, you don't have to spend so long thinking about uh, what you're going to write while mm -hmm. you know you can just write more quickly in that case. Okay, um, I saw a question from Anikath uh, about who was in the speaking uh, earlier in the week. Uh, we yes. ran over a little, so we didn't have much time for questions. Um, Anikath, your question is about part two of the speaking test. I think not the listening, and it's if the examiner asks you in part two, they give you a topic, say it's about books, and you say, well, actually, I don't read, uh, I haven't read any books recently, but I've seen a really good movie, and you start talking about the movie, um, will you be penalized for that? Uh, that's quite an interesting yeah. question. Um, I mean, if you, if you do make it very clear at the beginning why you're doing this, then, you know, it, it should be okay. I mean, I would, I would pick a film that's based on a book so that there's kind of some relationship there with what you were saying. Um, but uh, maybe read some books as well <laughs> might be something to do, you know, just one book. Uh, that does come up quite often. Um, but yeah, the, the key thing is that you, you know, you explain at the beginning to the examiner what you're doing. And when you do that, you are able to kind of change it a little bit and, and put it more in a direction that you want it to go. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I'd, I'd agree. I think the only risk with that is that if the examiner thinks that you've just memorized a, a topic, mm -hmm. like one topic, perfect speech on, and you, you just want to talk about that topic and they ask you, you know, okay, the topic is about a book and you say, I'm going to tell you about a plane journey I took. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. And they might be like, woo, actually, you know, this yeah. is just a memorized response. But if you can naturally transition into a different topic and give mm -hmm. a reason why, then it should be okay. So it should be okay. Yeah. Uh, it, it is a little risky. Yeah. Yeah. Better to stick with the original topic. Yeah. And, and just to have a book you've read that you can talk about. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Um, let's see. Um, yes, one is asking, can we use this structure with advantage, disadvantage essays? Uh, yes, uh, you might want to check out our webinar on advantages, disadvantages. It's up on our YouTube channel. The slightly different approach for that essay type, uh, but we do cover it in our webinar. Okay, let's see. Um, I, we have a question here from Lena. What is the fastest way to dramatically improve spelling? Ooh. Dramatically improve spelling. Yeah. Um, I think the good old, you know, kind of testing yourself is 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 the best way, you know, to do it. Is actually, you know, know what you're making mistakes on, test yourself, mm -hmm. then check it, do it again, check it again. You know, it's very old fashioned, but um, it works. I think, you know. Yeah, definitely. I think there. I mean, there are some good apps as well out there, like Spelling City, the website. Quizlet as well can help you to, it has different um, tests that you can do to practice. Um, Ashita in the chat is saying reading, a reading is actually an excellent way mm -hmm. 
to develop your vocabulary as well as spelling. So yeah, good, good suggestions there. Um, I'm afraid guys that we are rapidly coming up to the end of the session. So once again, we have not managed to answer all your questions. I apologize if we didn't get around to it uh, today. However, we do have a number of other channels you can contact us on. You can um, post your questions as comments on our YouTube videos. Uh, the, the video for this will be available tomorrow, so you can review it then. You can get in touch via our Facebook page as well. Um, you can ask questions on there, or you can email the website. So any of these uh, ways to get in touch, you're welcome to follow up. Um, I will put the, the link to YouTube in the chat uh, just now. Let me, let me find that. Uh, Fatima. There we go. And thank you, uh, Karen, for your lovely feedback. I saw that earlier. Um, it's, it's great that you found our webinars. I hope you, you found them useful. I've just put the, the link uh, into the chat there so you can see our Facebook page and YouTube channel. If you could give us a share on Facebook, uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel, that would be great. It helps us to continue uh, offering these webinars for free. Um, so guys, I, I'm afraid we're going to have to wrap up uh, for today, but very big thank you to Annalie for presenting and uh, thank you for, for joining us today. Yeah, it's been, been a lot of fun. So yeah, thank you very much Annalie. Hopefully we'll see, see you again um, very soon. We have more webinars coming up in August and, and September, so keep an eye out for them on our website. So. Cheers, guys. <laughs> bye. Bye, everyone. Cheers, Jamie. Bye-bye. Bye, -bye. Go on. Thanks, Thanks, everyone. Have a nice Thank evening, you. everyone. Bye for now. Bye. Cheers. Bye-bye. <laughs>